Alright, well, here we are at our station ready to perform our very first Exish procedure. The first step is going to be to reconstitute our DNA probes by adding 65 microliters of steam distilled water to the probe. We're going to want to let that probe sit for a solid 15 minutes so that it can loosen up and completely dissolve. Now, once you've added the steam distilled water to the probe, be sure to vortex and agitate really well to help that probe fully dissolve. Our next step is going to be to reconstitute our proteinase K, the digestive enzyme that is going to eat up all those ribonuclear proteins and expose our target. To do that, we're going to take 200 microliters of steam distilled water and apply it to the proteinase K. Just like you did with the probe, after you add the 200 microliters of steam distilled water, be sure to vortex and agitate. The next step is going to be to apply the proteinase K to our tissue section. And if you haven't already done so, now would be the perfect time to preheat your oven or your my bath to 62 degrees centigrade. It's extremely important that the oven or the bath reach that temperature prior to beginning the hybridization process. So, now that we have the slide on our Exish rail, we're going to pipette all 200 microliters of the proteinase K onto the tissue section. You want to be sure to cover that section completely so that we can digest all the ribonuclear proteins that would prevent us from finding our target. Now, we're going to let that proteinase K sit on the slide for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, it's time to remove the proteinase K from the tissue section. And it's really important that you don't leave the proteinase K on any longer than 10 minutes because once it's finished digesting those ribonuclear proteins, it's going to start digesting our target. So if you have to leave it on for 9 minutes, that's fine. 10 minutes, no problem, but try not to go over. To make sure that uh, proteinase K is off the slide, we're going to put it back into our slide jar, which is filled with PBS 7.4, and we're going to agitate or put it on a rocker for about two minutes. The test we're running today is the Kappa light chain and requires a hybridization time of 60 minutes. Be sure to check your protocol as different probes have different hybridization times, but 60 minutes is the longest. Simply pipette out the 65 microliters of probe, and just as with the proteinase K, be sure to cover the entire tissue section. Once you've applied the probe to the tissue section, put it into your my bath or your humidity chamber and into the oven and allow it to hybridize for a full 60 minutes. Now that 60 minutes have passed, it's time to remove your slides from the humidity chamber or the oven that you've got them in. We want to be fairly quick here in rinsing off the probe and cooling down the slide with the PBS. At no point do we want the slide to dry out. Once we've rinsed the slide really well, we're going to put it back in to the slide jar with PBS 7.4. And we're going to 
going to leave that in there for about five minutes. While we're waiting, we can go ahead and reconstitute our primary antibody, anti -jijoxin. To do that, we're going to pipette 1 ml or 1,000 microliters of steam distilled water into the anti-dig container, vortex, and agitate. Vortex or agitate until all of the anti-dig is dissolved. After five minutes in PBS, it's time to apply our primary antibody, antidejoxin. Now you want to be careful how much of this you use. You only need 100 microliters, whereas we used 1 ml to reconstitute it. It's good for 10 uses, and you simply want to make sure you keep it in a refrigerator in between uses. Now, we don't need a warm, humid environment anymore because the hybridization process is over, but we still want a moist environment because just like IHC, it's important not to let your slides dry out. So, we'll use a humidity tray, fill it up with steam distilled water, put the slide inside, and apply the anti-dig. Remember, 100 microliters. Double check your pipetter. Be sure to cover that entire tissue section. We'll cover the humidity chamber with its lid and let this sit for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, we're going to remove the slide from the humidity tray and we're going to rinse it off again with PBS 7.4. Once we've done that, we're going to put it back into our slide jar filled with PBS 7.4 and we're going to hand agitate or put it on a rocker for two minutes. After two minutes in PBS, it's time to apply our secondary antibody, which is anti-mouse polymer HRP. We're going to remove the slide out of the PBS 7.4 and we're going to put it back into our humidity tray. Now again, as with everything you apply to the tissue section, you want to make sure you cover it entirely. That's it. Let it set for another 30 minutes. And after 30 minutes of incubating the secondary antibody, it's time to rinse once again with PBS 7.4. We'll also put the slide back into the slide jar filled with PBS 7.4 and hand agitate or put it on a rocker for two minutes. After two minutes of agitation in the PBS 7.4, it's time to reveal our probe. We're simply going to remove the slide from the slide jar Put it back into our tray and apply dab just like an IHC.
We're going to put on just enough dab to cover the tissue section and let it sit for five minutes or so, depending on how old the dab is. Once the dab is developed to your satisfaction, we're simply going to rinse it off and begin to counterstain. Once you've rinsed off the dab, it's time to counterstain with hematoxylin. We use full strength Harris hematoxylin, which means you just need a quick one to two second dip. Then rinse it off in water, put your slide in alcohol, and clear and cover slip as usual. After you finish counter staining and cover slipping, you are going to be amazed at the results you see under the microscope. In fact, right now, we'd like to show you two serial tissue sections, one which we ran IHC on and the latter which we ran Exish on. We're going to morph them together for you here in just a moment and you'll be amazed at the difference. All that background with IHC versus amazing clear signal interpretation that you're going to receive with Exish. Take a look. What you're looking at on your screen right now is two serial tissue sections of normal human tonsil. The first, which we ran a Kappa IHC antibody on, and the latter, which we ran a Kappa Exish probe on. Pretty amazing, isn't it? From all of us at American Master Tech, thank you so much for joining us today for this video presentation of the Exish technology. If there is anything at all we can do to help you bring Exish into your lab, please give us a call.